In this episode, I want to take a look at how we can use the Intersection Observer API to see when a user has scrolled to a certain section and when that certain section is viewable by the user. In the example we have on the right, we just have a little about section, uh, part of somebody's website. And the example here is when we scroll down to the purple section, it's just going to fade in text. So this is kind of similar to how uh, if we were to use like a viewport scroll, when we've reached the top of the section, we want to display uh, this certain text. But the intersection observer is a bit different. Uh, we have some options that we can pass in to know when an animation should start. In our example, it's going to wait until it reached the very end of our div or section, and then it's going to run a function to animate. We also have an option to when a user is no longer seeing that section or is scrolling away from that section, uh, and we could pass in a function to fade out if we want. So again, once we scroll down to the very bottom of the div, it's going to animate its content, and when we scroll away, it's going to fade it out. The animation library we are using for this project is going to be GSAP. And I would first like to take a minute to describe a bit more about Intersection Observer. And after that, we can start the code. Now to know what an Intersection Observer is, I highly recommend you go check out the MDN web docs. Uh, that is where I'm pulling the majority of my information from. And I will just give you the definition straight out of there. So it says that the Intersection Observer is an API that provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with an ancestor element or with a top level documents viewport. In our case, our intersection happens at the very bottom of this div right here, but we could change that to where we might want to animate when we've reached halfway. And I'll also show you how to do that. Some of the things you can build with the intersection observer is lazy loading images or content. You can also implement infinite scrolling and then other things such as reporting visibility of advertisements um, and deciding whether or not to perform certain tasks based on where the user is at. In our case, we are performing a task or an animation when we have reached the end, when this entire section is visible. Another thing I do want to mention is since we are using React, I had searched for an intersection hook and I found a pretty good one called use intersection uh, from React use. And what React use is, is pretty much a bunch of hooks that very smart developers have created. Uh, one of them being the intersection uh, API. But if you go and check out this package, you can find a bunch of hooks that can be useful for your next project. So now I want to go ahead and break this project down real quick. We have a functional component, which is just our app component. We're importing React like always. We're importing use intersection from React use. These two right here are just the SVGs, the back and then the send SVG for our buttons here. We are importing GSAC because that's our animation library. And finally, we have app C S CSS. So we're using SAS for our styles. We're using a functional component of app and over here we're using react.useRef, but ultimately we could just use destructuring to bring in useRef, like so. And then the next one is we're creating a variable for intersection and we're using the use intersection hook. So we're passing our section ref as an argument and then we're also passing these options. These options are root, root margin, and threshold. Root is the element that is used as the viewport for checking the visibility of the target. In our case, we're setting it to null, which means it's just the browser's viewport. Then we have root margin. And what root margin is, it allows us to play with the margin of our div or section that we're targeting. So we can set different margins for it. And the best way that I could describe this is right now the margin is at zero pixels, meaning when we reach the end, it will animate. However, if I add a margin of 400 pixels, and let's scroll all the way up. You can see that once I scroll down, the animation is starting almost halfway. And that's because there is a margin of 400 pixels. To best visualize this in our SAS file, I'm going to change the opacity of our after, after pseudo element to 0.5. And I'm going to switch the height from 25% to 400 pixels. This means when we reach the very top of our pseudo element, it's going to either fade out or fade in, meaning that we've reached that threshold of when an animation should happen. So now when I scroll and this will reach the very bottom of my viewport, it's going to fade out. So you can see that that right there with the root margin set to 400 pixels, um, it's letting us know that this is going to uh, cause the animation. To further demonstrate, I'm going to switch this to 600 pixels of our root margin and switch the height of the after pseudo element. Remember this pseudo element is just representation. So I'm gonna switch this to 600 pixels as well. And once we've reached the very top of that, it's going to fade in and out. You could set it like this to where you can just specify a root margin of when you want the animation to occur. 
or you could use threshold and I'll describe what that is here in a second. So let me just set the opacity of this to zero so that we can hide that pseudo element. Back in our JS file, we can reset the root margin back to zero pixels. Then we can move on to explain what threshold is. So what threshold allows us to do is pass in a single number. And what the single number represents is pretty much a percentage from zero to 100%, one being 100% of what the target's visibility is before running that callback to run the animation. In our case right now, it's set to one, meaning it's 100%. So when the target or the section here, when we've reached 100% of viewing the entire section, it's going to run the animation. So you can see we've reached the entire div and that calls for the animation to run. Now, what if I only want 50%? I only want us to see 50% of the heights uh, section or target, and then we want that animation to run. What I can do is just set 0.5, meaning I'm only going to view 50% of the target and then run the animation. Setting the threshold to 0.5, I'll want to change this right here to 0.5. I'll explain this section here in a minute. When we're scrolling, you can see that once the target has reached 50% of our viewport visibility, we want the animation to run. You can see that it's about halfway of what the entire height of it is and it's going to run. If I switch the threshold to 0.2, meaning I only want to see 20% of it, it's going to run pretty early on, so you can see it's running right there. Okay, so I'm hoping that is a good explanation. I want to move on then to explaining this section here. But first, I want to talk about these two animations. This is a fade in animation and a fade out animation. We're using a parameter to pass in the class name and then just running this animation. One is a fade in, one is a fade out. Pretty simple stuff if you know GSAP. And then on the very bottom, we have a ternary operator that checks to see uh, which function we should run. In our case, I had mentioned the threshold, right? We were editing the threshold over here. What this means is this is specific to the use intersection hook. It's checking that if the intersection, which is this right here, if that and the intersection ratio are less than 0.2, meaning 20% of the target's visibility, then we're going to run this fade out function. If not, we're going to run this fade in function. So this means that right now we are less than 0.2, meaning we're passing in this fade out function, meaning that it's just going to be hidden. If we've reached this 20% or even went beyond it, which is greater than 20%, it's then going to run this other function, which is our fade in function. Again, fade in and fade in, these are class names that we're passing in to run, to run the functions here. So whichever class names have the fade in, they're going to animate. On the very bottom, we just have JSX, which is not that important. The only thing you need to remember is with our ref, we are passing in this section ref, which is defined up here. And anywhere you want to call this section ref for animations, let's just say if we were not using the class name, we just wanted to animate the div, we're going to have to do section ref. And this will return an object, but if we do dot current, it will return the HTML or the element. All right, so that is a breakdown of the project. What I want to do next is just get rid of this and then we can uh, build this out so that we can get a better explanation. Now to get the starter files, you can jump into the description below and then click the URL for the React User Intersection Observer. And in here, you can switch the branch to the starter branch and pretty much just clone the project. For our dependencies, we are using SAS, which you don't necessarily need to worry about if you're cloning the project. We're using GSAP for animations, and then we're using React Use, which is just a bunch of hooks that these talented developers created, and you can just search for that just simply by typing React Use. Again, if you clone the project, don't worry about installing anything, just run npm install, and then npm run start to start the project. If you've started the project, you will get this on the screen. And one thing I do wanna note, if we close out the dev extension tools, you're gonna to get this, a big ugly blob. I specifically just designed this just to be mobile friendly because I, uh, I don't know, I'm, I always design stuff for desktop and I got bored. But yeah, make sure you open up the dev tools and then set it to an iPhone X and you are ready to go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use a use ref so that we can specifically target the element that we want intersected. And to do this, what you could just write is a const and just define a section ref. You can write whatever you want and then just do use ref and we're going to set the reference to null. Now typically with use refs you want to use a use effect and a use effect is pretty much uh, what component did mount used to be. In this case we don't want to use that because we don't want anything to run 
um, on the DOM loading or the did mount. In this case, we're not using it because the function is being called after the component has mounted and it's not really, um, it doesn't pertain to us all that much here. You could use it if you want, but in our case, we're just gonna skip on it. Now we need to use the section ref to specify which element we want. We want the section second specifically. We're just going to do ref and then put section ref in there. Next, we're going to use the use inner section hook and specifically pass in the section ref uh, as our argument. So we're gonna do const and then we're just going to say intersection is set to use intersection. We're going to pass in section ref and then we're going to pass in certain options. First one we're passing in is root, which we'll set to null. Then we have root margin, which in our case, we're just going to set to zero pixels. I've already talked about the root margin. Uh, I made sure that we kind of highlighted everything before we start building. Then we have threshold, which with threshold, we're just going to set for one right now. Let's save that. And then we're going to write a ternary operator. Uh, we could use an if statement if we want, uh, but pretty much what this is gonna do is going to check if we've reached uh, the threshold, which is one, which means if we have reached, when we're scrolling, if we've reached 100% of our div, we're going to want to execute certain functions, uh, specifically the animations. So we have intersection, and then we're also wanting to check the intersection dot intersection ratio. And we're gonna make sure that this is less than one. We're going to execute a certain command. So this one means, I'll just write comments, but we'll say not reached, meaning we haven't reached the animation. And then else means that we have reached, so animate. Now we're gonna get an error because the ternary operator isn't doing anything, so these comments are not useful at all. But what we could do is we can pass in our functions. So we're going to pass in fade out, and then we're going to do fade in, and then we are going to need to make those functions. So we can do const fade in, pass in here. Oh, I misspelled that, so make sure we're using arrow functions and we can copy the fade in and then we can set fade out. So this is running and then fade in uh, will run fade in. Now to use gsap, we can just write gsap.2 and I'm gonna go ahead and write gsap for both of these functions. So gsap.2 and we're gonna pass in element. Then we're going to specify the duration. Our duration is going to be one second. And then with GSAP, we can add these curly brackets to write certain functions. So I'm going to go ahead and do fade in. Both of them are very similar, but they're sort of opposites. So with fade in, we want to set the opacity to one. We're going to put Y equals negative 60 so that it could come up. And then with ease, we're going to set power four dot ease. Oh, nope, power four dot out. I'm still getting used to with GSAP 4, or sorry, with GSAP 3, they updated the way you write easing options. And then we have a stagger, which the stagger is going to have an amount of, I can write, oh man, this is messy. Uh, the stagger is going to have an amount of 0.3. What the stagger is going to do is going to run uh, the fade in animation for the first element, and then 0.3 seconds later, it's going to run for the second element. So it creates a staggering effect. We can copy all this and just paste it in the fade out. However, we're changing the opacity to zero, getting rid of the stagger, and then changing the y to negative 20. We're going to need to use element as a parameter here. So make sure we pass an element for both fade in and fade out. And then let's not capitalize element here. So we'll leave it like so. But when we're calling in these fade out and fade in functions, nothing is ever being passed. So let's pass something in here. What we're going to pass in is a class name. So anything with the fade in class name is going to be animated. Now, if we scroll down, we can see nothing is actually working. And I believe this is because of the threshold. It's telling us we need to do 100% of the viewport, but we don't have enough space down here to get to 100%. You can see that it just kind of ends. So switching the threshold to 0.9, meaning to have only 90% of visibility should allow us to uh, scroll and have the animation working once we've reached 90% visibility. And if we switch the threshold to 0.5 or 50% visibility, we can see that now it's going to start animating once we have 50% visibility. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is what if we don't want the uh, section to fade out once we're outside of the viewport? 
um, what we could do here is simply not have anything for the fade out or anything executing if this statement is true. So simply just commenting this out right here will cause us not to fade out as we're scrolling anymore. You might need to play with the CSS. So setting the initial CSS to an opacity of zero. Let's refresh. And if we scroll down, it works. And if we scroll up and down again, you can see that it's not animating again. So it's all up to you on what your preference is. I prefer this. I prefer seeing an animation once. And when I scroll away, I shouldn't see it again unless I refresh the page. That's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. That truly helps me out. And have a wonderful day.